What's up Colorado State Rams fans, Rich Kurtzman here from the field, the brand new Sunny Lubick Field at the on-campus stadium in a victorious 58 to 27 day for your Colorado State Rams football team. I'm here for 5280sportsnetwork.com, for milehighsports.com, and we want to thank Crazy Carl's Pizza for the sponsorship of this video and the podcast content that we bring you on a weekly basis. Well, what an awesome day to be a Ram. Mike Bobo said it himself after the game, and 58 points that his offense was able to put on the board against not only an opponent, but a Pac-12 opponent, a Power 5 conference opponent, even though they might be one of the worst teams in the Pac-12 and in the Power 5, that was a huge accomplishment for Mike Bobo's offense and his team today in the first game opening the stadium. The offense and the team did not start well uh, for Colorado State or for Oregon State, really. Both teams exchanged punts early on. The Rams went three and out. Jake Bennett said after the game, you know, he's one of the team's senior leaders, the center. He said that that series kind of woke them up and you could really see them get it going after that. But you have to remember, Oregon State actually came out and took the lead in this game seven to nothing before Colorado State decided to really turn it in to high gear and put those tons of points on the board. The first score of the game and of the stadium for a Colorado State player was Izzy Matthews. He ran with force. Uh, they gave the ball to Dalen Dawkins down there on the, on the goal line. He was stopped. Izzy was able to put it in. Later, uh, Oregon State took the lead again at 10 to seven, but that was the second to last lead, I should say, uh, before Dalen Dawkins was able to catch up 18 yard pass from Nick Stevens out of the backfield. Uh, Dawkins really showed his versatility. He was able to score both on the ground and in the air in back-to-back -back possessions there. And uh, then, you know, the defense, well, they took a long time to show up in this game. Ryan Nall, who we heard a lot about, he's 6'3", 239 pounds from Oregon State. He really ran behind those 239 pounds all day and specifically on a 75-yard run that he took to the house to give Oregon State the 17 to 14 lead with 10.57 left in the first half of the game. The defense, they look completely lost. And at the same time, Colorado State's offensive line looked lost as well. They were allowing Nick Stevens to get hit far too often. Uh, he was hit hugely on one ball that turned into an interception. He said after the game that that play literally took every ounce of breath he's ever had in his life out of him. It took him a long time to finally get, regain his uh, breath there after that play, but he was able to. He did not have to come out of the game, and the offense, they started stepping up. You know, they ended up putting more points on the board when Dawkins was able to run the ball in. Uh, first, Wyatt Bryan, you know, he was able to kick home a 23-yard field goal. That drive stalled and it looked like it could spell trouble for Colorado State. They were only able to tie the game at 17 to 17 at that point. They should have put it in the end zone. You know, looking back, they needed to put it in the end zone, but they weren't able to. So 17, 17 at that point. Then late in the first half, uh, Dalen Dawkins, you know, he capitalized and capped off an eight play 66 yard drive. That was huge for the Rams late in that first half to finally take that lead again at 24 to 17. But then Oregon State, they wouldn't roll over. They wouldn't die. With 53 seconds left, they had 75 yards to go uh, before the halftime. They were able to get it all the way down, and there was a play at the very end of that half with four seconds left that looked like an Oregon State receiver caught the ball, but he was out of bounds. They replayed it. They confirmed that it was incomplete. So if they would have called that a completed catch on the field, they probably would have replayed it and still called it a touchdown. However, they called it incomplete on the field. They went to the replay booth. There was not conclusive evidence to overturn that call. Uh, a lot of people believed, on the internet at least, that it was uh, a touchdown. However, it was not called a touchdown. Colorado State was then able to go into halftime up 24 to 20. Then Colorado State really got everything going, not just on offense, defense, special teams as well. They started out the second half with a 45 yard return from Dietrich Clark. That was phenomenal. You know, we needed to see a lot more out of the special teams from this team. And there it was, 45 yard return to start the second half, even with people talking over here over my shoulder. And that was a huge return. That ended up turning into a touchdown. Oh, excuse me, turn into only a field goal once again. Colorado State's offense was up and down. They were great at times. They were 
very bad at times, especially with Nick Stevens getting hit as many times as he did on the day. That's something that they have to avoid going forward. The Rams were able to widen their lead at that point to 27 to 20. Then the game, the play of the game for the Colorado State Rams was Trey Thomas's pick six, which came off of a deflection. He said after the game, uh, when we got to talk to him in the in the media room, that he knew he was going to score on that play because of Jamal Hicks' block and that he was ecstatic as he ran it in and the crowd went wild. That was the turning point in the game for the Rams. Later in the game, uh, there was a huge punt return by uh, Ola B.C. Johnson that was called back due to a penalty. On the very next play, Ola B.C. Johnson muffed the punt and Oregon State was able to score to bring it to 27 to 37 with Colorado State still in the lead and 11.52 to go, about 12 minutes to go in that game. That had a chance to be the turning point the other way and give Oregon State all the momentum. However, Michael Gallup connected on a deep pass from Nick Stevens. He threw it over and over his opposite shoulder. Uh, Gallup said he was he did see the ball, but he had to throw his arms out there and reel it in. That was the momentum changing play back for Colorado State. They ended that drive with the touchdown. Dietrich Clark, he caught a 20 yard pass. Dietrich Clark was a huge player in this game. Later in the game, Cameron Butler, tight end, freshman, he was able to score. That was the Rams' 51st point. And then Marvin Kinsey even got in on the scoring action as the Rams put up 58 points. But it wasn't all just about the offense. The defense, obviously, they scored on that pick six. As Nick Stevens said, that's his favorite play because they're able to put points on the board without the offense even being out there, without them getting tired or even having to run a play. Uh, the defense overall had five turnovers on the day. The offense turned it over twice. That's a plus three on the turnover differential, which is usually a great indicator that that team is gonna win. When you're plus one or two or three, the higher that you get, the better chances your uh, chances are of winning that game. Colorado State walked away with this game. They walked all over OSU. They're not a terrible team. They're a bad team from the Pac-12. CU is gonna be a much bigger challenge next week, but this was the exact kind of tuna the test, as Mike Bobo said after the game, when I asked him if this was the tune-up that they needed, he said this was the test that they needed going into a short week. Uh, he also said after he was carried around in the locker room in a really special moment, go and check out at CSU Football on Twitter and see that moment that he told the team they only have a, usually a 24-hour period to relish in a victory. Today they only have a 12-hour period because it's a short week and they're playing their rival in the Rocky Mountain Showdown, one of the biggest games of the year. A lot of people think CU is going to walk all over CSU. A lot of those CU fans got a wake-up call today as Colorado State really, really came out on fire. This was the best offense we've seen in a game from a Mike Bobo team since he's taken over in 2015. Okay, that's it for me. We want to thank 5280sportsnetwork.com and Crazy Carl's Pizza. Go check them out on Saturdays for $4.32 ounce old Aggies right behind me over there, New Belgium Porch. I think I might have to go get an old Aggie right now. Thanks Rams fans for tuning in. Have a good week.